Yeah, so Karen is not here today. She has a USBGF um, meeting or something like that, but she'll show up later and uh, she will plan the chouette for anyone who wants to do that uh, when she gets there. So uh, not sure how long that will be. And uh, she didn't give me any announcements to uh, pronounce, so I have no announcements. Uh, so we'll, we'll get started. Um, just to let you know where we are in Michi's book, we are in the advanced level and we're working on what uh, Michi called Proverb 19, a builder cannot work with only one dice, um, which I think is kind of a uh, lousy proverb because I can't tell you what it means. Uh, uh, well, I can tell you what, I will tell you what it means, but the whole, the whole thing today telling you what it means, but uh, it's not something that's memorable that is automatic. I mean, you know, uh, break the mountain and tiger plays and fight for the strong point. Those are things that tell you what, what they mean. Uh, but this, this one is a little bit more cryptic and we've gone over a little bit of it, but uh, it's basically, we're basically talking about the tempo hit. Um, mostly we're talking about the tempo hit and that tempo hit is basically not a hit that you necessarily want to make. You often you're going to hit off the ace point you know, you have a roll of five and you go from six to one and it's designed to uh, make your opponent come in off the bar. And the idea is that, well, the builder can't work with only one dice. So if you make, make him come in, your opponent come in with one dice, then he can't make a good point with the other dice. Um, except, you know, obviously except for doubles. But, so that's mostly what, uh, mostly what Michi's talking about. Uh, when we're when we're talking about that, and we've gone over that, it's it's related to uh, the best builders on the nine point, and often you'll find that there's a you know checker on the nine point, along with maybe some spares on the six and the eight. That that's uh, that's a good time to think about a tempo hit. It also goes back to uh, the hit and split proverb twelve, which Michi gave one example for, and one other example in, in his quizzes. Uh, but it was basically what he meant by that was also hit off the ace point, and the idea was to split your back checkers uh, and, and and not let your opponent you know, uh, point on you. Um, so now there is uh, one example, and, and Michi is really really thin on this of what it means on kind of the offensive side. Mostly this is defensive play. Um, you know, the tempo hit is a defensive tactic. Uh, where you're trying to prevent your opponent from doing something. Um, and he's got, Michi has a couple of examples. Um, I didn't find them that, that appealing, but you know, here's one. Uh, so let's, let's look at it. What, when, what, what do we see? What do you see here? Right. Hey. Bar to 24 and 13, 9. I assume white's on roll. Yes, yeah. And, and, uh, and why do you think that, uh, John? The, the move? Yeah. Uh, to, uh, for the builder on 9. Yeah. Okay, well, that's, that's, that wouldn't be my explanation and it's not Michi's. Okay. <laughs> uh, but it happens to be the right play. <laughs> I'll give you credit for making it the right play. Uh, okay. uh, the, you know, the builder, you know, the funny thing about it, he had, he had a section and the builder at the nine point is the best builder. Uh, but there was never any reason to deliberately, that it showed anyway, to deliberately put your checker on the nine point. Uh, it was always, you got to guard against your opponent's checker on the nine point. Now here, what I would say is, okay, we're coming at the bar and we, we are going to either split or we're not going to split. And so I would say, well, what are the splitting rules uh, on this? And There's the a blitzing rules, structure. You've got 10 in the zone and you've got a blitzing structure. So don't split. Uh, come to, and then, and then, and then, then if you're not going to split, if you're either going to go you know, 10 to six or coming down to the nine, your opponent has a split. So coming down to the nine is, is uh, better. Um, for that. Uh, 
Now, uh, what Nietzsche is arguing in, in this section is that, okay, we can come in on the four, uh, come in on the 21, uh, and then move up 10 to nine. But if we do that, then we are giving our opponent uh, lots of chances to point on us. Uh, you've got three builders here, uh, even making the five point. And if he points on us, then this, this builder here becomes a block. Um, I just, you know, this play uh, also puts the builder on the nine point. Uh, uh, so, you know, that's, yeah. again, the idea is not to put, your, not to deliberately put a builder on the nine point, although it's, it's you know, if you have a chance, it's not a bad thing to do, but that's not going to drive your thinking here. So, but the idea here is to, you know, to avoid getting hit where you can't use this builder to make a point. Um, it's kind of the reverse uh, of things. So I, he talks a little bit about that. I don't find that very helpful. Um, and he, you know, he didn't go into enough. What, one of the problems with Michi's books on the advanced things is that he didn't really provide enough examples and he didn't provide the kind of the quiz format so that you could go and, and test yourself and put everything together. So um, that wasn't so great. But uh, mostly, um, we're going to be talking about de defensively how to handle that. So that, you know, that was, he did, but he did mention the offensive side. And so I wanted to show you that. Um, but he's, you know, he gives that one example and said, well, now we've covered it. So let's go on to the other side. Um, so here, uh, I think we may have seen this before, but, but yeah, we had the builder on the nine point. Um, and what do we do here? Six, two, twenty four, twenty one. Yeah. Yeah. The idea here is that, okay, if we if we come out here, we're, we're putting ourselves under um, pressure here, where he's got a lot of builders. If we hit, then he can't use that to, to point us. Now, he may hit us here, uh, which isn't so great, but, um, but at least he won't make the inner board point. Uh, and that's the idea. Now, um, I should have mentioned, he doesn't talk about a lot of when you do this and when you don't do this, because you have lots of opportunities to hit loose deep. And basically what we're talking about is hitting loose deep on a point that we don't normally want. Um, you know, we don't, at this point, we're not looking to get the two point, uh, to, to make the two point. We're, ju we're just using it as a defensive tactic. Um, uh, so, he, so he doesn't come up with any rules, but the rules I sort of derived from them is if your opponent has three or more builders, to, to make a strong point like we have here, typically nine, eight, and, and seven, but it could have been less, nine point is the better point, but even at the 15 or 14, you have builders to make the point. Then you might think about the tempo hit. Uh, the other situation is if your opponent has lots of blocks, at least two, which he's not likely to cover um, if you hit him loose. And so that was, uh, that's kind of another situation. And we saw that before when you're, if your opponent opens six, Six two, and you get a uh, five four. You know the the answer, which you couldn't hit. He's got, but he's got three blocks. So hitting loose here, or you know hitting doing the tempo hit here, means that he's got he's got to come in with one, and he can't cover. Uh, he can't cover both of them. He can cover one or the other, uh, and so that's the idea there. Um, Question. Yeah. So <laughs> my, my inclination would have been obviously wrongly, but I, I wonder how bad of a blunder to go 24, 20 and 13, 10. Uh, back, back to your original example of four, three. You uh, had your, uh, sorry, not on this one. The one right before four, three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we were here. Yeah. And the, yeah, so to fight for the to fight for the uh, his 
his five his five point and then I know it's not a nine but it's you know also yeah. I don't know I don't historic yeah. I'm, well, I'm here to learn but historically to to move move a checker that far down you know um, to you know to to uh, the one or two point all alone yeah so, yeah well that's so a drawback that, that move more you, 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 you're you're sacrificing a checker now it is you know it's on the six point so uh you've got plenty of checkers there stacked there already uh so that's you know that's part of it but yeah and, and it's that is certainly a drawback and, you know and and these plays the other normal plays you would do with a four three open um, right yeah, you know, it's not that terrible of a mistake to do that. Now we'll show you some examples where it is a bigger mistake, but uh, but again, the idea is that you've got enough. This uh, the the spare or the, uh, the the blot on the nine point as a builder uh, means that almost any roll that you get from that position, you're going to be able to do something destructive. But whether you use the nine or not, I mean, obviously, if you get double ones, you're not going to use the nine for that, but. Uh, to, to make the five point, um, but you know, but that's the idea. Uh, again, the, the, the proverb is, um, what is the proverb? Uh, yeah, builder cannot work with only one dice. So you're trying to be. So we're looking at situations where you want to think about disrupting your opponent. Um, and so, but it, it's, it's basically it's when you've got a lot of builders that could do something very constructive against you or your opponent has a lot of blots, which you can't hit other than, and, and so you're going to do a tempo, a tempo hit to disrupt him. Okay. Thanks. Took it as another one. Okay, so double sixes. Double sixes are easy if you have both checkers on the ace point because it's two down and two up. Uh, now, however, there are lots of things you could do. So, so bring them all the way to the one. Yeah, uh, two down to the one from yeah. 13. Yeah, what you should see here is, okay, he's got, there, there are four builders here to, to, to make either the, the bar or the five point or the four point or, you know, the bar point. Um, and so if we come down and hit, you can't do that. Now, you know, making the H point is not, is not the greatest. In fact, it seems like, uh, you know, it seems like you're wasting uh, a move to make a point that you don't want. And then you're not really doing anything constructive, but it's, it's the best, it, in this case, it's, uh, it's the defensive idea that you don't want to allow your opponent to full set of dice to do something constructive. Uh, and, and that's why you do that here. What about if you just bring, you bring three down and then, and then um, seven one, you just hit with one, like a, like a temple point. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and uh, the problem with that one is if you get hit back, right? Right now you've got, with the double sixes, you've got a big race lead. Um, so, you know, and then if you get hit back, all of a sudden your race lead is gone and then you're coming in off the bar and you're not likely to hit your opponent. And then your opponent has all this stuff going on here to, uh, to make the point. Um, and so, you know, that's sort of, that's sort of the problem there. Um, and, you know, and generally if you, if you hit off the ace point, you're going to want to cover it at some point. Cause if you don't, if you get hit, you know, from the bar, which you'll, so as you will get hit from it, but if you get hit from the bar, you go back 24 pips and, and that, you know, that messes up your race, um, your racing chances. Okay. So here's another one. 13, eight and um, 11, nine. Yeah, well, what do we see here? 
A lot of checkers. A lot of builders here and back here. So this is a situation where you do the temple hit. Now he can't make another, he can't make an inner board point. Um, and in this case too, uh, you know, we're, we're already back 19 so, pip. So if we get hit, we'll be back more, but uh, that's not that, that critical. And this one, this is a little bit uh, stronger play. I think uh, this one was yours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. This would have been a a, uh, a blunder. You, you're gonna you, because black is either gonna make a strong point here or or hit you. Um, there aren't that many there aren't that many bad rolls here. So let uh, me ask a let me ask a perverse question. If you do get hit on the on the six to one, mm -hmm. and you send another guy back. Given that he's got 12 checkers in the zone, can you make the argument that two is better than one? Um, uh, yeah, until, well, uh, that, that might be part because at least you can anchor potentially. Yeah. And as long, and at this point, Black does not have, any, have a board. So it's not likely you're, it's not like you're going, likely to dance. Uh, other than double sixes. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't make that argument. I wouldn't deliberately do that to get two back because uh, because we don't have a board either. And chances are, you know, he'll start firing away eventually. Um, and with his 11 checkers and his, or 12 checkers in the zone, uh, yes, that's not a winning strategy for us. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, that's, that's a part of it. All right, let's look at a couple more. Okay. This is actually below, uh, beyond the opening, quite a bit actually beyond the opening, but, um, but the ideas here are, are still the same. Eight, one hit. Okay, and now why would we why would we want to do that? To disrupt all those builders. Uh, yeah, you got all those builders there, and then you'd have yeah. a chance to hit the nine, the one on yeah. your <laughs> yeah yeah. I mean, you've got well, I I mentioned I showed you two conditions. You got lots of builders. Well, here's here's you know there's a ton of builders here. Uh, there are four spares that can be used to make one of these points in here. Um, plus you've got a blot here, a blot here, and a blot here. Uh, so, and, and in this case, we also have a pretty decent board. So, but but we couldn't really do anything constructive. Well, actually we, we sort of, well, could, you, we could have made the three point. You could make the three point. Yeah, but if, yeah. And, and so that, yeah, that would have been constructive. But uh, if we do that, then we, and black makes the four of the five, uh, we didn't accomplish much, or black escapes the nine if you can't make the point. Um, so here, uh, you know, we put him on the bar. We had the better board. Uh, maybe he'll dance, and that would be great. Or maybe he will come in and not be able to clear one of his blocks. Uh, so um, again, that's the idea. So uh, you know this. These are kind of tough to see, but 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 look at look for situations again. We have lots of builders uh, to make a, a good a good point, or you have lots. In this case, you have both. So, all right. Again, not not an opening uh, position, but. Um, <laughs> So you go um, eight five, make that five point, and four one with the two. Okay. Any any other ideas? Um. Yeah, close the seven. Make the bar point. Yep. 
No, I, I like the eight five four one. Yeah. Well, let's look at. Um, okay, so let's look at this. Uh, okay, we made the bar point, so we've got a nice five prime here. Um, but well, let's look at. Well, okay, let, let's. But what's what's the drawback of doing this? Uh, we'll strip the midpoint. We haven't stopped his momentum. Well, he's got all these builders here. Yeah, that was, that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. So, we, or this one was suggested. What's the uh, what's the advantage of, of here? Well, we have a four point board. I keep them dancing. Yep. Yeah, put them on the bar. Put them on the bar. Yeah. Yeah, he's on the bar, and now he can't do anything constructive. And we have a chance to come out and hit this, or at least make maybe make an anchor or, or do something uh, uh, useful. And he may get an awkward roll that uh, you know maybe maybe has to leave another blot, or maybe he has to use this checker to stack it someplace. Where it's not going to be as constructive. Okay. Well, it turns out that uh, neither one of those is right. <laughs> uh, but the idea was—I uh, think the idea was there. Um, the, the first thing should be okay. We, we can make the five point. We need. Oh, no, you know, this is wrong. I didn't put. He wasn't here. Okay. It's actually making the two point. So you come in, first thing you, you make the five point uh, and that should really be the first thing you see to make a five point with that four point board that's strong. But then uh, you, you know, you're vulnerable here. We don't have any spares to hit loose anywhere nearby. Uh, and so the idea then becomes, okay, put them on the bar. Um, let's look at the other plays. Uh, no one mentioned this. Uh, but it's actually the second, but it's a, it's a blunder. Uh, what the hell? Here, now here, yeah, okay, here was Charlie's play. Um, wow, it's a huge blunder. Yeah. Um, I don't have a, a great explanation for, for that because you are, because it seems uh, other than, you know, making the ace point is not really what you want to do. And even though you're giving up the five point, it's better to have the two point. That's not self-evident. Um, and so if you don't uh, see that, I, I would say kind of, you know, don't, you know, when you do the switch, if you can't, if you don't have to make the ace point, then don't make the ace point, do, do another point. Uh, but- well, uh, If you were faced with this situation, what would you have played? Mm -hmm. um, well, it's nice to well, have the computers tell you, but I'm curious. Yeah, to yeah. Think. Well, I, well, now that I've studied the vision, I would have made the, <laughs> the two. But beforehand, you know, I would certainly have made the five point. And after that, you know, it's not clear to me. Maybe I would have come down with, with the two. Yeah. Um, uh, or maybe, you know, the, the, you know, the bar point is still looks, you know, I can see why someone would make that. And it, it's not, um, you know, it's not self-evident that this is a terrible, I mean, this is a broken five prime. This is pretty strong. Um, but again, the idea is, you know, you've got all these builders here and, you know, this is the, you know, this is why you look at these is that, okay, hey, uh, we know that the bar point is strong, you know, the five point is strong, but this is a mess that we can't ignore. Um, and so, you know, often we're looking at, you know, what we're going to do with our checkers and what good things we can do, but we also have to look at where our opponent is and uh, recognize danger when you see it. Uh, Question, Gary. It's there. If, if, you go, if you go eight to two, right, which is what they're saying to do, then you have no checkers of your own in the outer board anymore. Yep. No, there's, there's no, I think that's a vulnerability that should be considered also. Um, yeah, I mean it's a drawback, but you've got the you, you've got the outfield covered. 
because you have the checkers on the midpoint. So, okay, black can come, you know, maybe comes in on the five, but uh, you know, the five is, is, you know, eight pips away from, from the midpoint to hit that loose. And you've got the four point board, uh, you know, you can hit them loose. Um, okay. So that's uh, really what you would have done. I, I go back to, was it John's question? Well, now, I don't think so, though. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't look like a Gary move. <laughs> but John, hey. that's, that's not something he would do. I, you know what? Okay, let me. Uh, uh, the computer is great, but I'm curious to understand what right. you know a, a real master would do. And that's yeah. I mean, it's uh, this all nice and it, I, it doesn't make sense. Let me say this: this one is a bit counterintuitive, only because how often we talk about the golden point and now we're, we had a chance yeah. to make it and that we're giving it up. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get it. I, I again, I, you know, before studying these positions, you know, I, I probably wouldn't, I probably would have done uh, this one because this, this is so, this is like, yeah. you know, what you want. Um, I don't like, I don't, I wouldn't have done this one. You know, th this, these two holes here, making the eight point is not great. And these two holes here don't give you the kind of the prime that you're looking for. Um, and so, you know, this, this four point board is a lot weaker than this point, four point board. Um, even though, you know, the five, it's the five point that's missing. Um, Although the one you were just talking about where we had, where we had two through, what was it two through five? Yeah. So, no, we had a what we no before that the other the one that you said you'd make. Yeah, I mean, there's a four point board. Yeah, you know, and with no with no gaps. Yeah, I mean that seems pretty damn strong. Yeah, well, you yeah, back, but yeah, you know, I, I I'm pretty sure that anyone with at at the highest level is going to make this play. Um, uh, I wouldn't say, necessarily say that I would be, do it, although I, hopefully now I will, given that I, <laughs> I tell you you should do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but well, uh, but what's interesting though is the alternative we've been talking about is a blunder. Yeah, well, everything is a blunder. I mean, yeah. this, I can see I can see myself making this play, and it's it looks really strong uh, because of the five prime. Uh, uh, but the, uh, but, you know, but it's not as strong as you, as you think, uh, you know, having a four point board with a checker on the bar is really strong, much stronger than, than you know, a broken prime. And, you know, even this for, uh, I, I, I'm not sure why the, the difference is so big here, other than, you know, this, this board is weaker even though it has a five point within this board. And it's because you've left the ace point open and you have these three in a row. The, the Swiss cheese type of, of, of prime is not, uh, it, it's too easy to, to, to skip through. Okay, let's do another one. This one, uh, <laughs> This one I would never have seen, and I have to say that if I see it again, I, I probably won't make it either. Double tiger. Yeah, it's yes, it's a double. It is a double tiger. Oh. Uh, which I, I don't want to get into it, but um, and and again, again, anything else is a blunder. Uh, so I would have done thirteen seven nine seven. Yeah. Uh, I think most of us would, you know, this is a five prime. Uh, so pretty. Right? Yeah, I mean, it looks, looks really nice. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the weakness is here. Okay, this checker's right here with a six that gets out. You've got three uh, checkers here. Even this one, uh, you know, six, four makes it. And, and actually, this is a key point. Um, and because Michi shows us this one, Okay, you move that checker from here to here. Um, and now, you know, making the, making the five prime is, is almost as good. Um, and it's just that extra, 
you know, basically six four or four one, uh, those extra rolls. Because now you've got, you know, with these three builders here, you've got a ton of rolls to make a point. With the builder here, you've got four one and uh, uh, actually with four one, you probably make the four point, but uh, and a six four to make that point. So, uh, and what Mishi's recommendation is that you memorize this one, which um, uh, is not, I think, one of his more useful recommendations. Uh, because if you're, <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, really once you get to, uh, one thing Mishi do, does, and, and a lot of the top players do is they'll have what are called reference positions and they'll have a lot of them. I think Michi has like 500 reference positions. And this is just positions like this, where there's a specific thing in mind that you have to do. Usually it's for, for, for uh, cube situations and things like that. And, you know, they'll go over them before a tournament, they'll go over them. Um, and for the rest of us though, who aren't going to be professional backgammon players and have, I think better things to do with our lives than uh, memorize backgammon positions, uh, it's not, this is not one that I would memorize. Um, I, there are some that you should. That, that, you know, not, you know, I think you can keep it down to uh, 10 or 20 uh, once you think about it, but this is not one I would recognize or that, that, that I would memorize. How okay. good of a move is that one? How what? How good of a move is that compared to the next one? Well, yeah, here's the play virtually everyone would make. Uh, and it's a, it's a blunder, it's a point one error. Um, still a strong play though. I mean, you're, you're 60, 40 to win here uh, with, you know, 20% gammons, but this one is, is 60, 40, but it's 31% gammons. So it's really the gammons here that are, they're driving this. Um, and again, you've got three point board, two on the bar, you got a, a five cover and a seven cover. Um, and, and then another blot out here. Uh, and that's, you know, that may be part of the reason, you know, this extra blot, if you, you know, if you get going, uh, you know, you cover that and maybe get a six or something, and now you, now you can shoot the extra blot. That's part of it. Okay, let's look at some other positions. This is one that I uh, came up with, came, well, came up against in one of my matches. Uh, and uh, I did not make the right play here. But hopefully you, we, can, you, we can pick it out now with the right play. 82. It's what? 82. Yeah. And, and why is that? Well, the, the, the proverb, you, you can't build with one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Look at all this. One dice. Yeah. Three builders and, and okay, if you have to use a four, use four. Uh, yeah, I, we're a sitting duck here. So we've got to stop him from, from being used in both builders. And, and there's a good chance that he'll dance too, or it's a 50-50 chance that he'll dance. And uh, basically if he comes in and hits us, we're screwed. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, there's a 50-50 chance that he won't. We have a direct six to cover, which you know, we need a six to get out, but um, you know, the, it gives us a chance. We're not in great shape here. This is more, you know, this is a desperation. You, you, we're now, it's now 60, 40 against us, but. Um, so Gary, did you make the nine point? Cause I'm trying to think what else could you do that's very useful? Um, I didn't make the nine point. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe I did, I don't know. This would have been the second best play. I'm not sure that I did that. Okay. Uh, the problem with the nine point here is that it's two blots and you're likely to get hit. Right. So uh, that's so the, the problem with the, making the nine point there. And the nine point does nothing for your prime. No, no, it's not. It, uh, you know, it's, you know, making the point, which is, you know, six pips behind the point that's already made means that this, this point is not nearly as, as strong so that there's not a great value to it. Uh, I think I probably did something like this because of it's one block, but but again, that's only a point three error. So it is a hail mary move, though. You got to yeah. pray he doesn't. You pray he doesn't hit the two, and pray you get a six. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's a lot to ask for. 
complete desperation, pretty much. Uh, but, Don't accept you know, the cube if it's offered. <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 pure desperation, but you know it could work because you do have the four point board. It, you know it also uses your strength. All right, here's another one that. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I did this right or not. Not if I did this or not. I might have. Well, you have to come in with a two. Yep. And then the two, five to three, hit him there. And then you get um, and bring down one, or 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 go six, six four no, and then you go six four. So you have another builder. Yeah. Yeah. So the main idea here is the five to three. If you do the five to three with two, you you're gonna you're gonna come up with all the top three plays, and obviously you have to come in with a two, and then you can the the best place to come in is to go. 1311 giving you know giving you a cover here um and uh uh i think i think i did this one though no i did i would have come up to the no i think i came up to the 24 which was a blunder a 21 point 20 point no 21 point yeah no that wasn't it I don't know. But the main thing is, you know, you come in and then you you see that. Um, OK, it's the these. This is the clue. You got four builders here. Um, and they're they're aiming for you because uh, there's no reason for black not to fire away here. Uh, that's his, that, you know, that's basically his game plan. So uh, if you switch points, you know, again, it, it, we're, we're breaking the five point, which is, you know, one of the strongest points and you don't want to do, you know, you don't want to do that. Uh, but, um, you know, it's against this. So you've got to, uh, and again, you have the better board, you put them on the bar against you. you know, it's only a three point board in this case, but that's, you know, that's not a bad strategy, even though you've given up, you know, a strong point. Okay. Let's do, uh, one more. I would say six one twenty four twenty two. Yeah, yeah, the tempo hit. But you see these, all these builders here. Uh, that's a sign, you know, for the tempo hit, and it's not twenty four twenty two. Although, uh, huh. so I think that's what I did. Yeah. it makes. I understand the reason you do that is now you got a six to get out. Yeah, that's exactly. Uh, and that would be. You know that would be the thing to, to look for, but um, it's not. It's to come down with the the builder to cover. Um, huh. uh, I, I think agree it, with you. What's that, Charlie? I agree with John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What does XG know anyway? So. Well, I mean, I mean you, that's. You need to get the only that's you get a six, you can pop out of it pretty quickly. Yeah. And you got well, you yeah. Well here's the thing though. We're down 27 pips here. Yeah. So uh we need to, we need to work on two things. One is containment of this of this checker, and the other is to somehow get us not get boxed in. You know, don't get behind the four or five prime. Uh, or or if you come out, you become a target. Um, cause again, you, you know, you don't have a board. So, all right. If you come out here now, now black is, you know, black is likely to hit you coming in because we don't have a board. So, um, and, and, you know, if he comes in and, you know, didn't hit you on the ACE, you know, you've got another checker on the ACE to hit. So, um, you know, those, those factors come into it too. Okay. So that's that's kind of it on 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 that chapter. Uh, 
Uh, again, not uh, not as straightforward as the other one. That's why it's in the advanced section, um, and it kind of you know forces you to change your uh, your thinking up a little bit, and it's not uh, not easy. Um, you know, these are these are uh, tricky positions. But again, you, you know, be, be be aware of the basic points of you know, lots of builders ready to pounce on you or to, to build your um, prime uh, or lots of blots, components, lots of blots lying around, and you can't do anything else uh, uh, that constructive. Let me ask you one question. I mean, what if he had a much stronger board, say a three or four point board? Oh, okay, so yeah. Um, I mean, that's easy. let me say this. It's easy. He's got one point board. That's easy. I mean, makes it a lot easier yeah. to make those decisions. Well, it's still right. Well, okay, here, here's, let's change it to a match play. Um, yeah, I, that, yeah, that's part of it. Uh, uh, certainly, you know, we don't want to go throwing checkers around when we've got something like this. Yeah. Uh, you know, and this is, uh, you look at these equities and we're, you know, we're, if you're below, below negative one, uh, that means that's bad. <laughs> that means you're <laughs> likely to lose and you're likely to get gammoned. Um, so here, you know, here, the best play, you're 77% to lose and 40% to get gammoned. Um, so yeah, so that's a consideration too. Um, uh, Again, you know, I wouldn't say that that this this particular chapter. I think it's, it's an important chapter, but it's. Uh, I don't think there was enough enough time devoted to it uh, to really work out all the ins and outs. And so, um, I'm, I'm giving you just the, the the highlights of it. So, I you know, I would be wary of 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 the tempo hit unless you're pretty certain. Uh, you know, unless you see the. You know the. the you know, unless you see all these builders pointing at you, um, it's just just as well. You're probably just as well as to, to, to stay away from it. Um, but you know, know know the specific cases. Um, you know that you know that's a little bit safer. And and be aware. You know, when you're in a desperate situation like we were the the last example, uh, that that may be all you have. And if you do have the four point board, or you know you have you have the strong board, then um, you know that's that's using what you, whatever tool whatever advantage you have to your favor. I mean, it's not uh, having the four point board doesn't you know it's still, actually it does a little bit good, but it does its best work 